Um, my name is Anna and I am a designer for Michaels. And today we are going to make this super cute little reindeer photo holder. And we're gonna make it out of clay. So if you wanna switch me over, I can get started on showing how to make this cute little guy. Awesome. So to make him, uh, you're gonna need a couple of items. Uh, we have um, this clay set. I'm just gonna kind of show you all the packaging. Uh, the clay set here, there's a Creatology. It's for three and up. There are um, several colors in here, but we are only going to concentrate on the black, white, and brown colors for our reindeer. Now, if you would like to make another icon, feel free. Um, you can make a, a snowman, um, a Santa, just whatever you want to, whatever you want to make. We are going to make uh, the reindeer. I'm going to walk through how to make the reindeer, but it's very similar. Uh, just whatever shape you want to go for, go for it. The instructions should be relatively the same. It's just the way you shape them. So um, we have the clay and then you will need some pipe cleaners and the color doesn't really matter. Just depends on what you, what you like. Um, I did red cause it matched his, uh, Rudolph's little nose, but it's up to you what you want to use. Um, and then we will need some sequins for his nose, but if you're going to do something different, maybe it's the buttons for the front of the coat or that kind of thing. It's up to you. Um, some wiggle eyes for his face. We are going to need a marker to draw on some details. This is a, whoops, upside down, a little Creatology thin marker. If you have the thick ones, that works too. Um, and some Creatology glue is what I have here. I have the sequin glue, but it works for all. It's called, I believe it's called glitter and sequin glue, but we, um, I've used it with paper. I've used it with clay. And actually that's what I used to put this guy together. So um, it will work for everything that you need. So uh, if, uh, we don't have any questions. We can go ahead and get started. I'm just going to move a couple of things out of the way so I can get working. So the first thing you want to do, I'm going to kind of keep him up in the corner here so you can see. You can have the, that reference. Let's see, let's put him over here so I have a little bit more working space. Oh, you can see him for reference. I'm going to take my rings off. Just makes the clay, clay mo uh, movement a little bit easier. Um, and I'm going to start with some the brown clay. So just open the package. I already opened mine. Just trying to be a little bit ahead so I can um, be ready. But yeah, and you're just going to knead it. So kneading it is just kind of rolling it around. I know it's kind of hard to see in here. I'm just rolling it around in my hand. You can pull it apart and kind of stretch it. We're just kneading it and getting it ready for uh, molding. So, hey Anna, yes. can um can we use foam for the antlers? Is the question? Sure. Yes, absolutely. You can use foam. You can you can um, if you want to use a Chanel stem and shape it. You can do um, paper. If you have paper, you can. If you don't have like construction paper and you have white like copy paper or something, you can draw it with markers or crayon. Cut it out. There's I mean there's all kinds of things you can do whatever you would like to use for your antlers. I'm gonna use clay, but you absolutely can, can use anything that you want. Great question. And um, this, this clay is really, really soft. So I'm just taking my time because um, I start, I kind of pre-started kneading mine a little bit ago. So I'm just gonna just kind of play and knead a little bit longer than needed, just so you guys can um, have your clay good and conditioned. And um, the first thing we're, and, and then once you, once you have your clay ready, we're going to take a small piece and just um, kind of put it, put it to the side because we'll need it later for, uh, you know, like the little piece of his ears and that kind of thing. And actually we're going to use it to mix with black to make a little bit darker brown for his um, antlers uh, if, if you choose to use clay antlers. Okay. So I am, so now I have my brown ready to go and I'm going to roll it into a ball and you, you can do that just by putting it in your hands and going, you know, rolling them like, like I'm doing here or on the, on your, on your um, working surface, you can roll it around into a ball shape. Doesn't have to be perfect. Cause we're actually going to, once we get a circle, we're going to kind of mold it into more of a little bit more of an oval. So it's not so round, but it's definitely, I mean, it's still, it's still round, but it's not so circular, I guess is a better way to say it. Um, so we are going to have our little shaped shape head here and you can continue to shape it a little bit. It does take 24 hours for this guy to completely set and dry. So you, you still have you have some molding if, if when you're 
working on him late when we get him to start assembling him and you're like, Oh, I wish his face was a little bit more flat or that kind of thing. You still have some room to mold a little bit, but just do the best you can to make your little, your shape. If you're doing a, a snowman, of course you'll want, if you're using, if you're making a white snowman with a, a white clay, um, you'll want to break it up into three, you know, different size balls. Um, same kind of deal, same kind of idea. So I am going to, here's my, and I'm just going to set that aside. And um, we have another question. Do you have any tips on how to get the clay soft if theirs is like a little hard from probably sitting for a little while, I guess? I'll be honest with you. That my my brown one was was like it came out of the package just super soft and super movable. The black one I have had in um, I've had out longer and it's kind of stiff. So really, all I'm doing is just keep is knead it. it you know, the, you may have to give it a little bit more kneading than what you normally would um, to get it to get it as long as it's still moldable, you're still fine. There's some like I was when I pulled this out because uh, I had already taken it out of the packaging and I had put it in a in a little baggie like this. Um, a, a several days ago, and it was almost. I felt thought it was going to be set, but really, I started messing with it, and it wasn't. So, just just kind of keep doing, um, kneading it and pulling it and stretching it, just to try to get it to to be a little bit more pliable. I have not tried any other tricks like adding water or anything. I'm not sure what that would do. To be honest with you, um, if you want to take a drop or two and try it, um, that might be a good a good way to get it moving. If it, if kneading it doesn't. Does it help? But I would definitely start with kneading it. And I'm kneading my, this black one because, like I said, it came out a little bit stiff. So I'm just kind of working it. But you can see I'm still able to move it around. It was not as it's not as movable as the brown was, but it definitely moves. And see, it was you know, is it'll tear. See, it tears kind of easy because it's a little bit firmer, but it's okay. I don't. I need it to tear in a little bit anyways because I'm going to break it apart. So I am going to take, once I'm ready with the black clay, I'm gonna take that brown that I kind of pushed to the side a little bit, cause I'm gonna add just a little bit of the, you only need a little bit of the black because a little bit will go a long way. And all we're trying to do is we're gonna mix it with the brown so we can make a darker a darker brown like his his antlers. This, his antlers are actually a very, very, very dark brown. And what I did was, like I said, I just mixed the black with the brown and you can see it's kind of swirling right here. I shouldn't say swirling, it's kind of, you know, you can see it's separated, but the more I need it, the more it will become a darker shade of brown. And if you would like um, to use any colors, you can use any colors for antlers. If you want hot pink antlers, go for it. Um, we have one um, guest who said that they came in late um, and they were just wanting you to describe what we're doing, what we have done or what we're doing so far. Sure, I can, I can backtrack a little bit. That's not a problem. So as I'm mixing this color right now, I'm actually just on, if you, if you have the instructions that are on our website, I'm on step two, but I will back up to step one. It's fairly, it's fairly easy to, to back up. Um, we are using, uh, we, we're taking the, we took the brown clay from the package and we needed it, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm needing this to um, make a darker brown. I'm actually going to add a little bit more black to it because it's not getting as dark as I would like. Um, and then we're kneading it, which is basically just rolling it around, playing with it, moving it back and forth in your hand, squishing. Um, and you're just trying to get it pliable. And then um, we pinched off a small uh, amount of the brown and set it aside but that's actually what I'm working with now to set it aside. And then with the rest of our brown, we've, we've shaped the head of our reindeer. Now I mentioned earlier that you can make any, any, you know, Christmas icon you want to make. I chose a reindeer and that's what we're doing today. But if you want to do a snowman, if you want to do Santa, um, you know, if you want to make an ornament, you can do any of those things. The steps are relatively the same. I, I'm going to be a little bit more specific because on this one where I'm getting to the antlers, but overall, when you're creating, if you're creating a snowman, you would need three um, separate sections of, uh, you know, for his three portions of his body or two, if you want to. Um, but the instructions are relatively the same. There's, you know, a little bit differences when you come to the fine details of the character, but beyond that, they're relatively, you know, relatively the same. And that's where we are. I, oh, I'm sorry. And then the next step was I took that small ball that we set aside um, and start and, and mixed it with a little bit of black to make a darker brown. If you can see here, I don't know if you can see real well, but it's with the, my lighting is not too great in, in here, but um, it is dark. I, I mean, I think I would like it a little bit darker. So I'm a little bit more 
black, but overall, it's just as long as you can tell the difference, unless you want your antlers the same. I mean, that's fine too. And I was mentioning that, you know, this is your, your character. If you want to make him more whimsical, then use a bright color for antlers or even his face. I mean, he doesn't have to be a traditional, you know, dark brown antlers, lighter brown face. It can be whatever you want this guy to be. So there we go. You can see the colors here are, are, are different. I mean, I know the lighting isn't great, but you can see that there is a difference between these two browns. So I have his, this is his base, and then this will be his antlers. And so what I'm doing with this darker ball is I'm going to set it aside for a minute because I'm going to take, well, I, you know, I'm going to, I say that I'm not going to set it aside yet. I'm going to break it into two relatively equal parts. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to shape, and these guys are going to be shaped into the reindeer's antlers. And an easy way to do that is like, I, you know, take your marker if you're working on, you know, working on a workspace and draw and draw, you know, whatever your antlers are going to look like. Mine are not going to be all that fantastic, but because um, I'm hand drawing, you know, just kind of draw. And then you can take your clay and you can shape it, you know, use it to kind of shape to shape your antlers, give you a good little, so a little tip. And mine does not turn out that way. Well, my clay, I have a little too much clay here. You don't need a lot, but you can shape them any way you want. So I want kind of a bigger hump on the outside, but I also want them kind of proportioned to what my, my reindeer size is. And remember, here's my head. So let's see, I'm gonna play with this a little bit. It's been a while since I've made this little guy here. So I'm just shape, shape this. And if you have a toothpick available, that's a great, great tool. I'm going to grab one. It's a great molding tool because you can kind of, you know, you can kind of, it'll help with some of the, like if you want the grooves in there, kind of make little, little humps, if you will. And typically that's how I start it. And then I'll soften, soften those little grooves a little, you know, I'm making my little circles or my little humps for his, I know, I think they're called, I forget what they're called, points. That's what they call them, points. My dad is a hunter, I should know that. Always oh, here, how many points? I don't know. So I am just, there you go, I like that. So now here's one. And remember, I use a toothpick to help kind of mold, make these little um, grooves here to, so I can shape the little points in his, his reindeer antlers. And then I want kind of a flat surface on, the, on one side because that's what I'm going to push into his head because the, um, the two clay uh, will, will stick together. And when it dries, they'll stay, to stay together like they were glued. Now you can glue them later if you would like, or if you'd like to glue them when we're doing this just for extra security or support, you can. I'm not going to, but you are definitely welcome to do that. And then I'm going to keep this one here because I'm going to make, I always have the hardest time matching my second one. So it doesn't have to be perfectly matched again. So you want a second antler. And I'm sorry if I'm out of screen, just holler at me. I try not to be. I tend to bring it closer to my body. Um, okay, so I'm gonna make my little grooves with my toothpick here like I did, or my, the points. And then if you remember, I just, that just helped me get things started with my, when I was molding it. We doing okay out there? I think so, we haven't had too many questions. So I think that, uh... I think that they're getting this one pretty easily, it looks like. Yeah, it's definitely one to kind of think about, especially if you want to do a different character. But if you're doing a snowman, I mean, right now you could, if you wanted to, you could be making like um, maybe his top hat or his carrot nose. Those are things that we won't be doing in the reindeer. The reindeer, the, the 
most, and I'm not going to say it's difficult, but I would say it's probably a little bit more of the challenging is to get two antlers that are relatively similar. They don't have to be, like I said, exactly the same, but relatively similar or way different. It's up to you. And again, you don't have to do the, the um, choose the colors that I chose. Um, you can have more whimsical. You can be more traditional. You can be extremely imaginative, come up with your own color scheme on your reindeer. It's up to you. And these are, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I kind of feel like these are not the same, but I'm going to flip this around. Another little tip there. You can flip it around to make it if it if you feel like it matches better the other way. Flip there, flip these little antlers around. This one I like love the way that middle was, and this one just does not want to match, but that's okay. Close enough. So if we have any others who have joined us recently, I'm you know we are. Right now we are molding the antlers just out of clay. So what we've done so far is we've made an oval uh, or our ball, but shaped it into like an oval shaped head for our reindeer. And we set it aside and then we are shaping the antlers. And to make this dark, dark brown color, we took a little bit of the brown that we used on the head and mixed it with some black clay and kneaded it until it became the color we wanted. And I kept adding, remember, remember, I didn't say this before, but you cannot take clay out, but you can always add more. So it's easier to start small if you're blending to make another color and add more as you work. So we have, it's close, it's close enough right there, I think. I think we've got a good little, I've got a good little guy going here. Uh, this part's a little challenging, but it's a lot of fun. And um, okay, so once you're done with that, once you've, I'm going to give you a few more minutes, but I'm just going to um, kind of talk a little bit. I'm going to backtrack a little bit just so everybody is on. I know I just walked through it, but just, uh, just in case I may have gone a little fast since I was concentrating on my antlers. Um, so we have, we rolled a, we, we pinched a little bit off of the brown and set it aside. So we can mix it with black in the in the next step to make the antler color. Um, but here I have the rest of the brown rolled into a ball and then shaped into more of an oval. And I mentioned earlier um, that it does take 24 hours to completely set. So you do have a little bit of time that you know if you uh, when you're when we start to assemble him, if you want his face a little bit you know maybe flatter on the front or whatever then um, you can still have a little bit of time to, to shape if you if you would like to. So I'm just going to set that here. Then we took the, the small pinch of brown that we put to the side and we mixed it with some black clay and um, and just kneaded it, kneaded it, kneaded it until we got a like a chocolate brown, which is what I have here. It's hard to see, but these are different colors here. And these are, you know, it's kind of an in-between. Um, so that's where we are. And then once you have your antlers the way you would like them, you're going to see if I'm on the screen here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to see how the orientation of the, where, well, like, uh, where do I want my face? So I want my face. Yeah, it looks like a good face. Now I'm going to put, I'm just going to push it in. Can you move your hands just a little bit forward? They're very, very close to the bottom. So I don't know how good of a, there you go. I gotcha. All right. And these right here, it will it will stick. You may have to kind of push it in because the brown's been sitting there for a few minutes. Um, but worst case, you can always add uh, a little bit of glue. I'm going to add a little bit of glue just for grins. The downfall is I got to wait for it to dry. We gotta hold it kind of for a few minutes to dry. The glue will dry clear. And I'm going to go ahead just to get some of that off here. I'm going to just going to put a lot on there. And then I'm going to set that there. I'm going to hold it for just a minute so it's nice and set. Let that go there. And then I'm going to put this one on this side. And I'm just going to hold them there. I got one of my reindeer ear antlers a little bit longer than the other, but that's OK. And then 
I've kind of squished his face a little bit. So I'm gonna, while I'm kind of holding these in to make sure they're, I tend to I'll move him up closer. Maybe that'll give me a better target. <laughs> a little bit more open space there. So here's that. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'm just gonna set it aside, set it down, let it dry. Um, so while that is while that is drying, um, do we have any questions yet or anyone struggling with anything? Um, we don't have any questions. We did just have a comment um, that one of our viewers um, couldn't find her white clay or his white clay, um, but they used foam with tissue paper squares with paint on it. Oh, great idea. Yep. Um, that, that's, I'm, glad, I'm glad that comment came through. Um, the question came earlier, if we can use foam instead of clay for the antlers, and the answer is yes. You can use felt, foam, paper. You can um, take a chenille stem um, and, and shape it if you want to and stick it in. Just whatever you want to do, whatever you want to make. I use, I use the clay, but you are absolutely 100% welcome to use whatever you want to use. That is definitely okay. I think that might be pretty good. We probably have good. And you can smooth it out. I know I have a couple of fingernail marks on mine and you can kind of smooth it out. Um, and yeah, see it, this one made his antlers a lot smaller than this one, but that's okay. We all have different sized features, so. This one just can have a little bit bigger ears. We have somebody who is making a snowman instead of a reindeer. Awesome. Very cool. I love that idea. So while, um, while this is a drawing, we're actually gonna add the rest of the, the items to his face. And um, I typically work top to bottom. So starting with the eyes, I'm just gonna take my glue. I'm just gonna add two little bitty drops for the wiggle eyes to add the wiggle eyes here. There's one, two, and I'm actually, while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and add this for his little sequin nose. And um, choose the, you know, the, there's several sizes of, of wiggle eyes in the pack. If you, if you had, if you received if you purchase the pack or have the pack that I uh, cited on the on the SKU list, um, there's different sizes. I'm going with a little bit bigger just to kind of give them a little bit bigger, a little bit more innocent face there. Look, big eyes open, and then um, and you'll take a, any color sequins that you want and make his nose. Now for the snowman, you have a lot of options as well. You can make a clay nose so it's kind of you know comes out, and then um, use the, the sequins for the buttons down the front. Um, you can embellish the, a scarf if you wanna make a scarf with felt and add some sequin to it, whatever you want to do. And I can't find a red nose, so I'm gonna go with an orange nose. No, pink is my favorite color. I'm gonna do a pink nose because it's cold outside. We have somebody who's making one of each. So I'm assuming she's making a reindeer and a snowman. Oh, that's a great idea. You'll definitely have, um, now the, the, I have this like kind of a snowy stand I made out of the white. Um, so that would probably be the only crossover color, um, unless you're doing like the, you know, the top hat and those kinds of things. But, you know, you can have fun with the pack of clay comes with all kinds of colors. So really you can do, you know, you can have a pink hat and a red scarf and a purple, you know, whatever, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, I was going to do a pink nose, but I can't find, I had a pink one a minute ago and I can't find the little guy. Here he is. Well, it's more of a lavender. I was going to go with a medium size, but I don't see that in my sequence. I'm going to pull out of my sequin bucket here. So it doesn't have to be this difficult to pick a nose color but I'm making it difficult. So I apologize for that. All right, we'll go purple. <laughs> we'll go purple and just stick that on there. And you can do, you can do it, you know, where it's cupped out or you can do it where it's domed out. This one, the sequence a little bit more domed. This one I did it, you know, where it's it kind of cupped like this because the sequin sequence has a kind of a cupping to it. But 
And then I'm gonna let that dry for a few, you know, a few, few seconds here. So make sure you um, upload pictures of your projects. Hashtag uh, make it with Michaels. I'd love to see the, 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 all the reindeer that were made and also the snowmen or what the other icons you guys decided to, to make. Be very interested to see what all of your creations. And this is, I believe this is the last class in our winter workshop. So thank you guys for joining. Has, has anybody taken um, some of the other classes or joined some of the other classes? I recognize a lot of names. Oh, good. That I've been seeing all week. Yep, That's Talia, I've seen you a couple times. <laughs> Love it. Well, I am glad that you guys are loving, you're liking these classes. We, we uh, the designers, we enjoy making them for you guys, making the project ideas and uh, coming up with the ideas and a lot of fun. There's three of three of us designers who work together to four, I'm sorry, four designers. We work together to didn't count myself. Um, <laughs> I was thinking of my, the girls I work with and and then I was oh I'm at the table too. So yeah this is it's a lot of fun for us. So that's probably a couple of minutes there. And then, so I'm just gonna take a marker and I'm gonna draw my smiley face because my guy is very happy. Mainly because it's warm in this house and it's cold outside. I live in Val Texas, it's not that cold, but. Val says she made a scarf for her reindeer. Oh, well, awesome. Did she make it with clay or with felt or with foam or yarn or how'd she make it? She didn't say, but she'll probably okay. tell us. Awesome. Love to hear it. She, she said she used clay. Awesome. Good job. So now um, I am, I'm sorry, my hands are jumping ahead. I'm going to go, we're going to go to the hat. So to make the little hat, all I did was, and you can do it, you know, take different items that you have. Like you can use this marker, you can use your glue bottle, um, you can use your hands. Uh, I'm going to use my hands for this, but I'm just going to make a spiral. And then actually to, uh, at the top part, you want something a little bit smaller and I'm going to do kind of a coil. And so I know it looks kind of funny like this. Let's see, let me move him a little bit so you can see with that better background. It's kind of funny looking because um, I have that small coil at the top and then the bigger hen here. So I'm just gonna tighten it up now with my hands. I'm gonna shape this a little bit because there is a wire inside it. So the coil at the top, I want two next to each other. You can, I don't know if you can see, I'm trying to, there, but I'm squishing them together um, because when you have a, a, a picture, it, can, it will fit right inside there. And you know, I should have one somewhere around here. I'm, I'll at my daughter, I'm sure she has one I can grab. I'm just going to shape the hat. Do you have any recommendations of what they could use instead of a red pipe cleaner for a hat? <coughs> Excuse me. Sure, you can use, um, if you have paper, you can, um, the, the only, it will be hard, you won't have anything to hold the um, picture on with, but uh, if you use paper just to make a hat, you could uh, cut like a rectangle and then fold it into a cone shape, glue it, stick it on top. Um, you can even do that with foam and foam you can kind of put cut a slit across the top that's that's um that's like this right here uh so you can stick a picture in there so there's a couple different things you can do so with this bottom just a little bit of the bottom chenille stem i'm going to wrap it and it's going to be a little bit tricky here but i'm going to wrap it around the bottom loop and see if i can i'm going to do this see if i can do this so it's easy to see on here. So I have this piece right here that's kind of hanging out here. I'm going to wrap it around. And then, so I'm just going to thread it. And I'll show you here. It's kind of just wrapped around thread because I, 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 this part right here is going to go through the top of his head here. So it holds, so it holds in place like I have here. But, so we now you can use glue if you want to to hold it to hold it um, in place but this is the best way to hold him hold the 
hold the um, chenille stem in place and balance the head. So when you have a picture on there, it isn't you know super wobbly or anything. But really, you know, I just wanted, and, and when I made this, uh, the, I just wanted a whimsical circle or, or whimsical kind of spirally hat. It was not in any kind of, if you can see here, it's not symmetrical, it's not perfect and didn't want it that way. Um, so I wanted it a little bit whimsical and a little bit kind of different. So that's what, that's what I did here. It also makes life a little bit easier when you're trying to make one to look just like that. And, you know, it's like, oh, okay, that's easy. I can do, I can, it's easier when I don't have to make things so perfect. But there, um, and so as you can see here, I have this shaped where there's the coil. I'm sorry, it's upside down. The coil is at the top. And then I have this little, and it, then it oop, spirals down. And then a little thing at the bottom. And the thing at the bottom, and when I and I, when I push this in, I want to make sure I arrange where the coil is. The coil is flat towards me, so when I put my picture in, it will go in. Um, oh, I wish I had something right here. I could. I know I have a million of the little. Uh, I use the little Instax pictures, but you can use, you know, any picture. Um, I can just cut a piece of paper so we have an idea. Let me do that. Let me do that. So it's not going to be super pretty, but it will be, it will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay. So um, I just cut a little piece of, here I'll. So just so you know, I am not the designer who does our fine art. And I have long hair, so here's my ponytail. Okay, so there's my little picture. So when I when I have a picture that slides inside the two piece, the coil, like that holds it in place, I want it to be facing forward. Does that make sense? I'm gonna move him a little bit this time. So when I push it in, I wanna make sure I keep all those things in mind, okay? So I'm going to grip that little um, line from the inside and push it through and then I and I reshape the little part that I squished and so there we go so I have now once you put it in there put it in there that's not like oh no I wish I would have done this you can still move it around shape it a little bit just be careful because you remember this isn't set real well yet and our little reindeer head can mis be misshapen easily like I just did I put, I pinched, um, pinched his little chins. Uh huh. We have one viewer asking if you can show how to do that top part for the photo. So that little spiral oh, yes. at the top. Yes, I will. I'm going to set this guy aside. So um, I'm going to use a green chenille stem this time, just because it's what I have right here. Um, for the top part, the coil part, I'm going to turn it right here. For this coil part right here, I just took a smaller object like a pen or a marker. Um, and it can be a pen, a marker, um, it can be a pinky finger. And I'm just going to, I just wrapped it around two times and then slid it off just so I had this little coil that looks just like this. Then for the rest of the hat, just below it, I took two fingers and it, it kind of basically did the same thing just so I can get that spiral look. And then really, I, I just started shaping it from there. That just kind of gets me started. And then I just you're, shape it. You're sorry. off the screen. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I tend to, to move it closer to my body and closer to my eyes. Yeah, I think that's a natural thing yeah, most people do. Yeah, I apologize for that. So, um, but I did, um, you know, the, I did this, the top part. I did it just on a smaller piece, but you can do, as you can see, like my fingers are, may not be as small. Some of the little ones may have better, better finger sizes. Um, but uh, I just wrapped it around two times to do this little coil at the top and then wrapped it around. And, and if you're using little hands, wrap it around two fingers um, to get to get the coil start, you know, the bigger um, spiral started below the coil. And because the wire is inside here, it makes it a little bit easy to to start shaping. So really, I wanted to do wrap it around here and or a finger to get the coil started. But really, I'm doing a lot of the shaping by hand. 
And then the smaller piece here is the one that I, um, I kind of I bent and then I, I, I twisted it around the back and then brought it to the middle. I know this angle is, is, is not the best to show how to do this, but. Um, and then, so just so you can see the back, it's just all, I mean, it's, it's a simple twist. It's just, it's really a fold over. It's not even really a twist. It's more of a fold over. And then, um, so that, so that I have that stem going down, going through the middle. Um, and what that does, instead of just doing the coil and then just a thing at the bottom, wrapping it around here helps keep this bottom firm. So when you push it in the head, it, it's a little bit closer. That, that part right there, that, that right here is closer to the, to, the, to the head here, as opposed to being way up here, more, a little bit more springy. For me, it looked a little bit more like a hat when it was closer down. Oops, was, was, that, was that helpful? Going a little bit slower? I think so. Awesome. Um, and, and so just, just for reference here, I'll stick my little, my little stick figure picture in. The picture in the, um, on our website actually has my daughter when we had the, the snow in Texas back in February. I love that picture of her. It was perfect for this and somehow did not make it back with the project. So <laughs> don't know. So um, when I picked up the project, it did not make it back. So um, the last thing I did for my little reindeer guy is I made this little snowy hill stand, this white stand. It does not have to be a white snowy hill stand. It can be a green grassy knoll, or it can be a beach, you know, you know, whatever you want, just make you know, our snowman. He likes the beach, right? Um, our snowman or um, our reindeer. I'm thinking Frozen, one of my favorite movies. Olaf loves the beach. Um, so all I did was I, I, you know, just like we've done earlier, I needed my white clay to get it nice and, you know, into a good moldable consistency. And I used the whole pack of white, but if you just want a little bit, if you just want to do like half, I mean, that's fine. And if you find that you're like, oh, half's really not enough, add more. So if you like, if you want to reserve some to make something else, if you have one pack with you and, you know, a little bit can go a decent, a decent um, distance, move him up a little bit. And all I did is for, for the purpose of here, I did, I did cut it in half. So there's, there's one half, I'm going to roll it into a ball and then just shape it any way you want. And really like here, I didn't do a circle. I did it kind of like it's um, a puddle, if you will. And then also the back part, if you can see it from the side here, let me see if I can get this at a good angle. I did it thicker here and thinner here, not for any reason, just the way I like, you know, this is just the way I liked it once I was putting it together, kind of like a snow hill. So rolling, rolling it in the ball and then shaping it, all it really does is help keep things kind of smooth. And then am I, yeah, I'm centered. So I'm just gonna shape my little heel and see, I think that, I think half of a, half of a pack of the, the whites for the snow was, was perfect. And if you want it kind of, you know, wobbly or I shouldn't say wobbly, we, um, scalloped, and you can bring your handy dandy little um, toothpick and put some little indentions in there. And then once you get your indentions in there, that just helps shape it a little bit. And I'm just pinching it to keep my little scallops. Um, move your hands forward so they can oh, see sorry. what you're doing. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And then once I have that kind of the way I, I'm happy with, I am just gonna, gonna smush them in there, being careful not to, again, misshape my little, his little head. This clay is really, really, really soft. So just um, be, be patient and aware of your pushing in. But there you go. I mean, I just have it kind of sitting in there. And there we go. There's my little guy here. He's kind of sideways there, just so I can show you. But normally I would have it sitting up. And what this does is the little stand at the bottom, it's not 100% necessary, 
Um, but I did find once I put a picture in, I added it later because once I put a picture in, even if I flatten the bottom of my, uh, the head of my character, the pictures seem to kind of make it want to fall backwards. This just provides a better, better stand once you add the picture. Now this picture right here, I have in paper thin and the Instax photo or even having any kind of other picture, um, even though they're super lightweight, it still tends, it just adds enough to knock this really lightweight um, reindeer picture holder over. So I thought the, the little doing a little clay stand was a was a nice little addition, especially when you have lots of clay packs to use within your set. Um, we did have a couple comments. Okay. Um, so we have somebody using somebody's adding pink to the cheeks of the reindeer for blush. Nice idea. Um, you, they, I'm assuming somebody, they're doing it with clay because the marker uh, they didn't show up. They didn't specify, but I okay. kind of assumed clay as well. Yeah, awesome. um, great idea. We have someone making earmuffs. Oh, I love it. We have someone who made a scarf out of pipe cleaners for their snowman. Yep, good idea. You can do a couple. And of, you can you can twist them together to make a you know, if you want different color, you know, kind of make it stripey or candy cane or however. You, I don't know if those are even words, but I just made them up. Um, <laughs> or you can do you know if you want just red or green. There's a, lots of ideas. Those are great ideas. And we have somebody who asked if you can make ears too. Yes, yes, you can. And the ears that I did, and, and thank you for running what I did here was just, I know it's kind of hard to see here. They're just like small balls. So I just put them on the front. So I just mixed, a, I'm, I just took a little bit of the brown. It doesn't take much. And just kind of do it like a, a, you know, roll it into a kind of a tiny snake or it could be a ball and then shape it to like a little, and then you just place them on here and and then um, and it will stick or you can add um, add a little bit of glue if you wanted to. Because we did the brown earlier, it, it may, it's kind of a one way stick. And you have it when they're both kind of fresh, they tend to stick a little bit better, but the white uh, was was sticking really well. And then you have just a little, it's just little ears in the front or you could put them, you know, up higher. I just, mine were lower for, I don't know why. This one doesn't want to stay, but let me put a little bit of glue. This glue is great. It, it comes in, I believe, a I believe it comes with five of these tubes. And if I remember correctly, and, um, and it works on a lot of the Creatology products. Ideally, I would like mine that lighter brown, but I used all my brown making my little antlers. So, um, so now I have just a little bit darker ears, but that's okay. And you can, like I said, you can put them wherever you want. Because I have the hat up here, it was hard to see. So I moved them down a little bit. Um, the person who you who put um, the pinks on the cheeks said that they did use clay and awesome. they mixed red and white to make pink. Okay. Now the pink in that comes in the pack may be a little too bright. If, if you don't want one so bright, if you want something a little bit more subtle, that's a great way to make a lighter, a lighter pink. Or if you um, have some, on something else, you can, you can definitely do that. Um, we have somebody who used a pom-pom for a hat. Great and idea. Somebody who made hooves for the reindeer. Oh, love it. Super cute. Lots of great ideas. Definitely. So yeah, I know we, we kind of finished up a little bit early, but um, we can, uh, you know, if there's any other questions, we can, I can definitely try to provide some ideas or answer some questions. But I love I love hearing the, the different ideas you guys are coming up with. Me too. I'm I'm for for the purpose of, of what I'm teaching here, I'm, you know, I try to stick real close to the supply list as far as what I'm using, but I'm definitely open to to give ideas on different items to, that you can use. But I mean you if you have spare, you know, you have some yarn, um, if you have some felt sheets, or even like if you have some old t-shirt pieces that you can, you know, all of those things are great items to use to make us, or uh, foam also, um, to make different features and, uh, and, different, and different ideas. 
It's on your we have we have somebody who made candy canes to put on the white stand. Oh, very um, cute. Someone who gave the reindeer a body and somebody okay. who specifically made Rudolph. Awesome. I love it. I'm going to, I like the candy cane idea too. I'm going to, I'm going to share that, share in that idea. And I'm adding one right now. So I'm just twisting red, red and white candy cane or uh, Chanel stems together. And I'm not going to make mine too big. And then just cut it with this, just these Creatology um, blunt tip scissor. And then shape my little candy cane. You can always make a little sign that says North Pole if you wanted to, or I have to go back here. I have a little bit more snow. Cute, love it. If you want to make little trees, you can make little trees the same way um, as we did the hat, except you don't need to do the coil at the top. You can just. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to go on it. I'm going to go on a toothpick because I need something really, really small. And I'm just going to do the same thing I did earlier. It's just make a bunch of coils and then I'm just going to shape it. I'm just going to kind of take them apart a little bit, loosen them up to make a little tree and cut. Ugh. Cut the little tree. I have a whole little scene here. I'm going to have to make, I'm going to have to pull out the rest of the little white snow and make a bigger, bigger <laughs> stand so I can put all these cute little ideas in here. And then here's a little tree. Looks kind of like a clump of Chanel stem right there on that on my tree, but I think it I think it comes across as the tree. There's my little scene. Got little, my candy cane is much bigger than the tree, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> you can put little if you want to put little the, some of the small sequins in the tree, make ornaments or little pom-poms if you have little tiny pom-poms or even if you you used your whole whole pack for snow then you'll have a little bit more room um unlike me but I think I did all right figuring that figuring it all out so super cute I love the ideas you guys are very very creative it's fun to work with all shapes and uh, sizes when it comes to where you are in your creative journey. If you're a beginner or if you've been doing it for a long time, it's always fun to hear all the different ideas that everybody comes up with, regardless if you're, like I said, regardless if you're a beginner or really young or been doing it for a long time. It's lots of fun to hear. And remember, you can use markers to, to draw directly onto your um, clay. Some of the colors may not show up on darker clay, um, but uh, you, if you're using some of the lighter ones, you can always add, like if you have your snowman and you want to do blush, like, like um, our lovely uh, uh, friend made uh, the pink blush with clay, you can also use the pink marker on, like if you have used the lighter colors on like the snowman or whatever. Um, but the wiggle eyes are great and all the different sizes. I like to go a little bit oversized on my on my um, on my wiggle eyes usually. So that's why whenever I need to let you guys know within a project what projects uh, what items I used, I like to use this pack here because it has all different sizes. So it's such a great item to have in your um, in your toolbox, um, in your crafting toolbox. So you've got big ones and small ones and medium ones. So you can do any sizes um, and they work really great again with this glue really to anything I've glued it to foam obviously clay um, felt and it, it stays pretty well but once you're done with your with your with your um, little scene or your or your icon your creature um, you want to put it in a space that it will not get tipped over or messed up just kind of up you know on a counter or somewhere um, I, I, if you have a paper plate that's a great kind of transport item um, and to set it on so it can dry and you want it to dry for about 24 hours and you don't want it to fall over if it falls over sometimes they um 
you know, he could hit the ground and indent. And then when you wake up next morning and his little back of his head's indented and, um, and, and that's okay if it happens. I mean, you know, we, we all happen, but if you want to keep your, your guy in good shape, then just make sure it dries for a complete 24 hours or sets, I guess is a better way to say it sets for 24 hours. And then you can start putting your picture or whatever it is that you want to put inside the coil at the top. And if you didn't want it to be a, doesn't even have to be a photo holder. It can just simply be your Christmas, you know, reindeer or your Christmas elf or what, or snowman or Santa, whatever you wanted, sleigh. Yeah, I'm going to thank you again for coming to the class. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to add your photos to uh, hashtag ma uh, make it with Michaels or upload your photos and tag it with hashtag make it with Michaels. We love to see your projects. Um, I believe you mentioned earlier that um, today's the last day for the winter workshop, but I did put a link in chat with um, upcoming kids club online classes if you um, want to see what we have in the future. Thank you so much for doing that. That's I didn't know what all the classes were off the top of my head, so I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to it's hard to keep everything all the different things oh, yeah. that are going on, but we do have a lot of things going on. If you live in an area that it's harder to get out with the weather being so cold and, or if you're like us in Texas where it's, you know, 80 degrees <laughs> and you want to be wintry, um, you know, making wintry crafting items kind of gets you, get you going. So. All right. doesn't look like any um, questions are coming in. So. That's great. Getting a couple duns though. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that was a perfect timing. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed the, the, our little craft today. And I hope you also enjoyed all of the crafts in the winter workshop, especially for um, those of you who are able to make some of the previous ones. Um, I believe they're recorded. If, am I correct in saying that? Yes. Yes. You can go back and watch. Will. Awesome. Yes, you can go back and watch um, some of our previous uh, work winter workshop classes. If you um, had to miss one or all up till now, um, they are definitely available to go and back and watch. Or if you love this one so much, you want to watch it again, you are welcome to do so. I believe it's what the next day or 24 hours, roughly that it's the classes are posted after each class. Yes, yes. Okay. And I put the um, link to our YouTube channel and the website where you can view those in the chat. Great. Thank you. Um, Amelia asked uh, today she was looking in store for classes and it does not say in what state or where they are. Do you know? We uh, haven't I, opened up our in-store classes yet. All of our classes currently are still online. So there now we do have we Stay tuned. There are some in class classes coming. I don't know if the um, the kids classes, uh, what the schedules are to get those rolling back out in the in person classes. But um, so we are online. I mean, you can be in any state and grab whatever projects or um, classes that we've already had. And you can also see in the link that I believe that was provided um, a few minutes ago that what our upcoming classes. So something that you may uh, we haven't done yet and you would like to participate in live like this one. Um, but going and watching the video is just like being live. <laughs> Unlike obviously you can't ask the questions live, but. Um, definitely go check out what we have, uh, what the offerings we have out in previous and what's coming. There are lots of different things, kids jewelry, kids clay, kids basic crafting. Um, clay would be under the basic crafting, I, you know, but still it's, we have a broad range of, of ideas and, uh, and project 
projects out there. Even if it's not a class, go look at the website and go into our kids, um, link, our kids, um, what do you call it? The, the tab and, and see what, there's lots of projects in there that we are putting up all the time. I believe at that link as well, when we do start having the in-store classes, you'll be able to find them at, on the website. Yes. And we're, I know we're working with different tools to make finding classes and local classes um, a lot more, a lot easier and ready, you know, easier to find and, and, and learn about. So um, just keep watching for our, our, our emails and our updates that we send out. And um, if you don't have our app, download it. It's a great tool. Um, you can find projects there. You can scan products and find what stores have what if you're looking for something specific or order from there. And it's just, it's a great, it's a great tool when you're crafting. All right, looks like we have nothing, no more questions or comments left. Awesome. Well, I guess um, that may, uh, wrap up our class today. So I appreciate, again, thank you for joining us. And um, don't forget to upload your pictures and of your projects and hashtag them with hashtag make it with Michaels. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in very uh, in soon upcoming classes. Right. Thanks, guys.